Hey, well, thanks for stacking. Yeah. What do you mean hanging off? I don't know. Welcome back, folks. I'm Ronald. And I'm Ronnie. And this is the Ron's World. And thank you so much to our subscribers. And please, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe right now down below. This week, we're talking about the new Ford Bronco. What do you think, Ronnie? Man, I tell you, I was so apprehensive about this coming out. I thought Jeep had this market all sewn up, but then I saw this thing, it is hot. It is a good looking car for sure. The reason why we chose the Bronco is that there's something that Ronnie and I in our uh, very long-term uh, friendship is that we love cars yeah. and we love unique, special cars. And in fact, the Bronco is one of the most unique and special cars that have been launched in a really, really long time. Though it looks like the older version, it's it's been upgraded considerably particularly with all the modern uh, conveniences also having a vehicle that can go off-road and has some utility this uh, this one actually covers a lot more bases look i think the thing that you know is most exciting to ronald and i about this car is that as he said we love cars and we love things that are like cutting edge and new and this has been one of the most exciting cars to hit the market in years there's been so many different sites and blogs talking about the bronco and what makes it cool i just think you have to come see it i'm not you know a ford advocate i'm not a you know bash of any other car i'm just excited that something new is entering the market and to ronald's point it's vintage, like Ronald here. It is something that's old, that's starting to look good again. <laughs> that's true. I've been trying to take care of myself. I had a New Year's resolution about that. Uh, you should check out that episode. That's a good one. So you'll notice something about these mirrors. Like in most cars, the mirrors are actually attached to the doors. But in order to go do some true off-roading, you like to take the doors off so you can see the ground when you're going around obstacles. The Bronco was designed such you can take the doors off, all four of them in this case. They do have a two-door model, it's a little bit shorter, but the mirrors stay on, so you have the safety. But these will collapse and you're able to... Is that true? Can these collapse? Yes, they can. Yes, I was right. <laughs> I thought I'd done my research on this. One of the reasons I'm particularly excited about uh, the Bronco is that my first car was a Jeep and I was able to take the top off and I remember that feeling yeah. of being able to go off-road and actually as a teenager, my parents really didn't know about it, but I did kind of take it off-road, was, wasn't quite as safe. So, but with the Bronco though, there's a number of safety features that I feel a lot more, uh, better protected. And the nostalgia aspect of being able to go back to what it was really like driving that Jeep um, and, and feeling the, the wind in my hair and being able to take the doors off, yeah. the Bronco has all that. Yeah, what Ronald's really trying to say is he wants to look cool <laughs> and he's trying to get the Bronco to do it. Yeah. And let's not kid ourselves, he's gonna be right. Now I tell you what, these tires are so beefy. Like get a zoom in on this. Like these tires are just naughty and they're gonna be good on the road as well. But man, I tell you what, this is the kind of tire you want to have to look tough. And am I gonna go off-roading? Eh. I'm gonna look like it can go off-roading and that's what matters. Okay, you'll notice that on this model, they actually have a rock guard here. And you can actually get steps for this, but not recommended for any kind of off-roading. So as Ronnie said, you've got the beefier tires and the rims such that you can go over some serious off-road terrain, but you wanna make sure you're protecting the side of the body with these, um, with these particular rock guards. You notice on this one, they didn't uh, opt to get the push bar. And what you might've noticed if you checked them out maybe a year or so ago online, the push bar they designed actually covered up the Bronco emblem, which, you know, it dissuaded a lot of people from ordering a, a push bar with this thing, but they were smart. What they did is they redesigned the push bar such that the push bar still shows the Bronco emblem on the front. Very smart of them. Another thing you can notice down here is that they have the tow hooks here. And this is all, this is all standard on the Bronco. They're expecting you to take this thing into the woods and get it stuck. I don't think this thing is ever gonna get stuck, but if anything happens, you can pull it out this way. You can also add a winch here if you need to help your friend out and pull somebody else out. All right, so look, <laughs> would I go out off-roading? Probably not, but let's just say bad things were to happen. You know, let's say there's a hurricane that comes in. Doomsday or scenario. Yeah, like I want to know that I can get myself and my family to a safe place that I have a car that's able to do it, or even a more practical one. Let's say I'm on the freeway and there's traffic and I want to be able to get off, but I'm not at the exit. I want to know I'm in a car that can go through that ditch and get off to the on-ramp without actually worrying about flattening my tires. I mean, there's real life urban uses of off-road. Am I gonna go up a mountain? Probably not. But the urban thing of going over a curb or getting around somewhere, yeah, I'm gonna do that all the time. Look at the clean lines and look at the soft top. Like what Ronald was saying, we can put the top down now. 
I can literally put the top down in a convertible, but I'm also off-roading. It's the best of both worlds here. You notice these little dots here? As Ronald mentioned earlier, all the awesome functional safety stuff of today is on this off-road vehicle. So it's got proximity sensors that tell you how close you are. It's also got a camera right here so that you can see what's down below you, which serves two purposes. One, it's gonna act as a camera to tell you if something's there, but more importantly, like let's say you are off-roading and you're coming through a ditch, you're gonna be able to use this camera to see what you have to get through, which is a really well thought out plan. So I'm super impressed with it. I love the styling. I just think that Ford really knocked it out of the park with this one. You might notice there's these all these rivets in here. That was designed specifically so they could take different pieces off and aftermarket stuff could be bolted back on. You can actually take a, a considerable number of the parts off of the car if you wanted to. Having a vehicle like this gives you a lot of options and there's a lot of safety aspects to that. You know, if you see a wreck coming up, you can go down into the ditch safely without rolling your car over. But also like we live uh, fairly close to the beach and getting onto the beach and go surfing. And then like if you're up in the mountains and you want to go camping, you know, it's, it's kind of difficult with certain types of cars. With this, you have no issue. You can get to the campground you really want to do. And I know my family likes to go camping now and again. You just tend to feel more comfortable doing some activities with a car like this that you otherwise wouldn't. So I'm actually getting excited about it. In fact, this one has a number of accessories you can buy, including putting a tent on top of the car so you can sleep on the back of the car. I'm gonna be willing to bet a thousand dollars that Ronald will never do that. That's <laughs> oh, I won't be uh, I won't be sleeping on the top of the car. That's I right. can see him driving it to a hotel but to actually camp on the roof i don't think that's happening well in all, in all seriousness my youngest daughter wants to go camping so bad and uh, though i'm gonna do it regardless having an off-road vehicle like this is just that uh, other bonus to going on a, a camping trip with my daughter yeah i agree here's a couple other things to think about if you decide that the bronco's for you it comes in two different engines and also two transmissions. If you want to get a manual transmission, like a lot of us, we like to drive the manual transmission, makes us feel like we're more in control on the highway or off-roading. It's paired with one of the smaller engines. They have a larger engine that's paired with the, with the automatic transmission. So do you see how they did this antenna? Do you see how it's wound like that? That is such a subtle thing that most people don't realize the purpose of this. But the reason this is wound up here is so that it isn't hanging off of it. I mean, who would have thought of that stuff? Don't have it hanging off. What a great design. See how it says established 1966. This is paying homage to the original Bronco when it first came out of the assembly lines in 1966. And they really were careful about this design to make sure that they paid tribute to that 1966 original model. Such a classy touch. I'm really impressed with it. A lot of people are now thinking, uh, do I wait for the Bronco? There's a really, really long waiting list for these. And many people haven't even got theirs yet. They're still waiting for them. So they're trying to decide, should I go ahead and jump and get the Jeep Wrangler or should I get the Ford Bronco? Well, there's some things in the Bronco that you really want to wait for. One are the seats. They're supposed to uh, withstand any types of weather. Also, it come, uh, any water that's drained down, there's drain holes that you can pull up so all the water can just drain out the bottom of your, um, of your floorboards. They've really thought of everything for the new Ford Bronco. And I think it's gonna compete really, really well against the Jeep Wrangler. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me three, four, five years from now, Ford Bronco is up there with the Jeep Wrangler from a volume standpoint. Thanks for stopping by and checking out the Ford Bronco with us. My friend Ronald and I were super pumped to share with you today our thoughts on the Ford Bronco. And listen, if you have a Ford Bronco or if you have some opinions, leave them down below. We would love to hear what you think about the new Ford Bronco. And until next week, I'm Ronnie. And I'm Ronald. Catch you later.